joined by Matt and Rich. Rich, I already forgot your name, that's a terrible yeah. start. Matt and Rich from Steamforge Games. Oh, let's go again. <laughs> we can do if you want. No, no, no. It's <laughs> fine. And you're here with Guild Ball. Yes. yes. Uh, which is fancy football but slightly different, I'm led to believe. You are 100% right. It's, um, it's, it's medieval football. Yeah. Um, so it's actually based on our real history. Uh, the history of, of the game of football that we know um, is peasant football. It's played on feast days between neighbouring villages, trying to shove a dead pig between the, uh, the, the, the gables of a, of a church door, um, and whoever won, won. Um, and what we've actually done is planted this into our own world, the Empire of Free Cities, and uh, essentially the mercantile guilds, the, the butcher's guild, the fisherman's guild, the candle maker's guild, so on and so forth, they, they have all seen the popularity of this sport and pumped money into it. And, um, and, and they see it as a way of promoting themselves. So what you end up with is teams sponsored by the various guilds. And so the butcher's team look like butchers playing the game of guild. Right, okay. And it's not a board game like, say, Blood Bowl or Dread Bowl. It is a miniatures game, isn't it? So you're on about tape measures, scenery, terrain, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. If you think of games like Blood Bowl and Dread Bowl, take them off the grid, put it onto a tabletop. That's pretty much where Guild Ball sits in the market. I mean, what we find from, from taking it from a board and putting it onto a traditional tabletop is you get that, you know, infinite options. You know, the, the, the fidelity of the movement that you have is, is, is far greater than counting squares or hexes or whatever so uh, it just gives you much more options yeah have you found that you've got a uh, crossover of people that wear into like Blood Bowl and Dread Bowl or you find it it's more than the War Machine players or the Warhammer yeah. players or is it everything I mean we, we we were we were quite deliberate in where we wanted to position this product and you know the, the games industry is experiencing such a, a phenomenal growth and explosion of ideas and, and just walking around the hall today is it's amazing to see all the different games that are out there and it's the ones that that create something new or they straddle multiple genres or multiple kind of gaming demographics they're the ones that stand out as the most interesting other than that they, they you know it's very easy to, to do a game that's just like X or just like Y yeah. but if you can take two or three elements from different games and push them together you actually create a game that's interesting to everyone and and Guild Ball was, was deliberately positioned at that point where it's not a board game but we can see why people who play board games and enjoy board games would be would be interested in playing it it's not an out and out miniatures game, well it yeah. is, but do you know what I mean? It's not a full on war game. Yeah. Um, it, it's, but it is, and, and so we pull people from that direction. But we're also getting, um, you know, people who play card games, we're getting people who used to play games and, and haven't played for a long time and they're coming back. Yeah. Um, we're also, and I'm most proud of, uh, getting a huge amount of kids, so, you know, um, sort of 10, 11, 12 year olds playing with their dads, um, these are the new gamers, these are the guys in 10, 15 years time who are going to be doing what we're doing, keeping the game, keeping the industry, keeping the hobby going. So, so uh, with it being like sports teams, how big are these teams? How many minutes have you got on the table? So the teams are about six players. Six players um, okay. If you're playing the tournaments, we usually bring eight players, so you've got a bit of variety in there. Uh, I guess it's a 6v6 game. It can be played 3v3 as well, so the, the starter sets you see, they're actually based on the free player play game. So okay. the perfect way to get into the game is to grab one of these, you know, get a couple between your friends, yeah. rock up, play, put them down and get into it. And before you know it, you've got the six players, you're playing the full game, and the, the, the barrier entry, the curve, you'll see with, our, with feedback from our demo games, you know, to actual play is really, really good. You know, it takes 10 to 15 minutes to learn, and then you're straight into it and experience the whole thing. Okay, so with it being a miniatures game, what else do you need? Like, because you need to take a surface, but what yes. do you need in the way of terrain? Is it is it dense or is it scarce or is it? It's quite yeah, it's quite light. Uh, we usually say six or seven pieces of terrain on the yeah. board, and they are very things from small walls and things like that to small areas of rough ground or fast ground. So it's quite easy to go. And we've got quite a lot of third-party developers that do quite a lot of that, so it's quite easy to get access to. Um, yeah. As far as the tokens and stuff, we produce our own token sets. Um, so slide that one that way. Have a look. Okay. On. So we do a, ra a range of token sets and templates to help people play the game. But quite honestly, we, you know, we're, we're a free-to-play company, so our rules are online free. You can download okay. paper dolls to print out and play, templates to play as well. We, we're quite happy for people to just play Guild Ball. So however you do it, we're, we're totally happy to do that. Okay, cool. So you did season one, which was Kickstarter, was it, am I right in saying it was a year ago then? A year ago uh, from delivery. Yes. A year ago from delivery, okay. Yeah. So two years we started the Kickstarter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you're on to season two? Yes. yes. So what's, in, what's the difference? Is it a new game, an expansion, or just so, more teams? So season two has um, 
has a has a number of facets that are worth talking about. Um, one which is possibly the most subtle is the entire game itself has been tightened and polished. And this is an iterative process that we're going to do every season. So okay. rather than going down, you know, the first edition and then waiting three or four years and suddenly go, da-da, second edition, yeah. three or four years, da-da, third edition, we're, we're looking for incremental improvement. Okay. And we listen to our community. We actually engage mm -hmm. with our community quite directly. Uh, we have uh, a number of um, high-quality playtesting teams all around the world. So we're seeing lots of different metas um, and getting lots of different feedback. And that all feeds into tightening up the rule system. So that's, that's probably the least interesting, but one of the, one of the more important aspects. Um, further to that, we've um, released a new team called the Hunters Guild. Um, they are uh, a brand new team. They bring uh, a completely unique way of playing the game. Uh, and they basically expand the horizons. So it's not just, let's say you turn out with your new Hunters team, it's a new game experience for you, but because I'm playing with my butcher team, it's also a new experience for me. So yeah. it, ref it freshens the game up um, and freshens the meta and, and you see you know, models swirling around in popularity and, and, and not so popular um, as a result of doing that. So that's something that we will carry on doing is, is adding more guilds and, and different play styles. And then the, the last thing that's um, uh, like big ticket thing is uh, a campaign system. So we've um, looked to build um, from the ground up a campaign system that reflects the, like the polit political machinations behind the scenes of the guilds. It's very much a game about stabbing people in the back, doing secret deals, owing favours, giving favours out. And it still all revolves around once a week you get with your buddies down at the club and you play your game of guild ball. But then outside of the club night, you're doing secret deals trying to stitch each other up. So, oh, right, yeah, okay. it's really fun. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how developed is the world then? Because it's you know mostly sports games. You see the world, you see the game, and not much beyond it. You're suggesting there's a, there's a universe beyond all this. We spent a lot of time and effort on um, uh, on building the world and making the world feel very believable and very real. And the way that we've done that is focused much more on the characters. Okay. So in the game of Guild Ball, every single model you see is a named character with their own history, with their own friends and allies and enemies and, and dispositions. And um, we, we actually tell stories, like character-driven stories. So you see progression of characters through, through the game, uh, through the, the different seasons. And we're not afraid of killing people off. Okay. So there's real and present danger for models, like, you know, um, I'm, I'm the most bloodthirsty when it comes to writing characters out of the story, um, <laughs> quite merrily kill off like two or three characters, no problem. I mean, we've built it that, you know, the first thing you say when you say that to people is like, oh, well, does that mean I can't play with that model anymore? Yeah, yeah you can. We've, we've, we've designed around that and that's fine, but for the story to progress, you know, I think the characters need to be in real peril for yeah. it to be, be more meaningful. So, so if you're playing a more thematic game, you would say, right, you're at this year, you can't play those. Exactly right, right, yeah. Okay. So, and that, that comes down to the tournament organiser or the event organiser. Maybe yeah. they want to do a season three only, you know, or it's, it's like a historical one. So season one only, yeah. you know, and, and kind of do a nostalgic kind of, uh, sort of throwback style game. So the world is, is, is interesting because it's the thing that seems to be hooking people in who don't ordinarily read flock and background. Yeah. And, and I get a lot of people come up and talk to me and, and talk to me excitedly about the fluff and they say, I don't normally read the fluff. <laughs> and it's and it's because if you look you know, if you look at every character has has a, a bit of fluff, bit of background, bit of interest to them. Yeah. But that hooks in with the with the full story that's going through. So they might read their, this little bit here and go, Oh, I kinda wanna find out about that guy and then and then two pages later there's another bit about yeah. it. And then they'll go through and read the whole arc. Now the reason why it's so compelling is the fluff impacts the gameplay and the gameplay impacts the fluff. Okay. So it's very, very synergistic. So when you're playing this guy here, Veteran Rage, and he has an ability called the Bloody Coin, you think, well, that's a cool ability. I don't, you know, and ordinarily you just take it or leave it. But if yeah. you read his fluff and find out how he got the Bloody Coin, basically he killed a previous player um, and stole their money, right. um, and now he hands out these bloody coins. It ties in with the fluff, yeah, okay. and, and, and people really, really enjoy that kind of that feeling of, of that it's a real world uh, swirling around this this game of Guild Ball. Yeah. So you just pointed the mention there. You've got this little. Uh it's not a chap here. Though. Yeah. Why yeah. is he a bit different to the rest of them? Then? So that is uh, that's Truffles. That's one of the brand truffles. new. Yeah, Truffles. Uh, he's one of the brand new mascots that were brought in uh, in uh, season uh, two. 
Yeah. Uh, he's now, yeah. yeah, he's literally just becoming, uh, this is a resin mass you see there, so this is straight from the 3D printer okay. that we then send off to get manufactured at our various places. So right. we uh, thought we'd bring him down to the UK Games Expo to have a little uh, sneak preview, so yeah. people are going mental over the mascots, they've been waiting to see them, so these are our next lot of releases. So, okay. so mascots are new for season two? So they? season one, uh, everyone had a mascot, uh, right. one mascot. Every team must be composed of a captain and a mascot. Yeah. So season two brings an additional captain and mascot to the mix. So now people have got a second one to play with, they can kind of swap them in and out. Gives them more flexibility, more choice, and more design options for when they're building their teams. Yeah, okay. And um, so these, these are, what guild are these you've got on show here? So we have, um, this, this guy here is uh, from the Brewers Guild. Okay. Uh, Rage is from the Union Guild, which is essentially a mercenary style faction. They can play for a number of different teams. Oh, okay, so you can mix and match your teams a little bit it's, outside exactly, the guild. Right, yeah. okay. Um, but they also play for themselves um, as a Union team um, yeah. as well. Uh, this guy is from the Alchemist team, but he also plays for the Engineers team, so he's a bit of a, a, a crossover model. Again, supported by the story, so there's a reason right. why he, he's the only model in the game that can play for two okay. teams. Um, and this guy, Bonesaw, is from the Morticians team. Okay, so and you said on your website you've got enough to start playing your cardboard tokens yep. and that, so what's your website so everyone knows? Steveforge.com. Nice and that. simple. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to go beyond that, this is what basically what you need is it a couple of starter sets and off you go. A couple of starter sets go and honestly like before you even touch our starter sets, go and print and play, go and download it, read the rules yep. and experience the game. Make sure it's a game that you like before, yeah. You, yeah. before, you, before you drop a load of money on it. Yeah, or spend 20 hours painting. Exactly yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, we've all done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have all done yeah. it. I mean, but this is this is us. This is when Rich and I started Steamforge. We gamers and always will be gamers, and we know what we've done when we go to shows. And you yeah. end up spending two hundred quid on that game that you never played. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that when we started our games company, that we 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 help prevent that kind of thing from happening. So yeah, please download the rules, play it, read them, play them before you even spend a single cent on on models. Excellent. All Thanks right. very much, guys. All right, no worries. Thanks.